بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم أعزائي الطلبة رمضان كريم عليكم إن شاء الله هذه هي المحاضرة الأولى من محاضرات الفصل الثاني I will talk about the vertigo, deafness and tinnitus Vertigo is a false sense of imbalance or hallucination of the movement of the patients or their surrounding يعني المريض يحس بوجود دوار أما يحس أنه هو يفتر أو يدور أو المحيط أو الأشياء اللي حوله تفتر حوله The balance of the body is maintained through the inputs from the vision from proprioceptive and somatosensory receptors and from the labyrinthine receptors These information should be integrated within the CNS and the main coordinator is the cerebellum and the vestibular nuclei within the brain stem and the output of this integration is the cortical awareness of the head and body motion or subjective awareness of head and body motion <coughs> control of the oculomotor activity control of posture and control of motor skills Vertigo is often described as an acute, intense, rotary spinning sensation and this is usually caused by labyrinthine lesions whereas disequilibrium, dizziness and giddiness are less intense chronic sensations of imbalance or anesthetiness and this is usually caused by systemic factors The most important aspect in the management of patient with vertigo is the patient's history and in 80% of cases can be diagnosed from the history. Examination of a dizzy patient or patient with vertigo includes number one is the patient pale anemia or sweating due to cardiac disease and anxiety labyrinthitis. Number two check the vital signs so you should check the pulse to exclude dysrhythmias the blood pressure lying and standing positions to exclude postural hypotension and temperature for the viral infection number three look for facial palsy four examine the ears to exclude cholesteatoma five examine for nystagmus, the type and character of nystagmus. Six, carry out Dix or bike test when there is suspicion of benign paroxysmal positional vertigo. And number seven, perform Romberg test. Number eight, carry out Enterberger test. And number nine, watch the patient walk. You should do, you should examine the patient to do gait test. So the differential diagnosis of dizziness, according to the history and examination, we can reach the diagnosis for the true vertigo, true rotatory vertigo. Number one, true vertigo lasts for seconds, provoked by positional changes of the head. We do dix holpike test if it is positive, so the diagnosis is benign paroxysmal positional vertigo. Number two, true vertigo lasts for hours, associated with oral fullness and fluctuating hearing loss, and the vertigo is recurrent, episodic. If pure tone audiometry shows fluctuating sensory neural deafness, sometimes low tone affected, so the diagnosis is Meniere's disease. If the true vertigo lasts for days, it is single severe attack and the patient unwell for one week. Pure tone audiometry is normal and the enterbergas test positive, so it is vestibular neuritis. But we should exclude the vascular lesions when the patient is elderly with risk factors of CVA like uncontrolled hypertension, diabetes, 
hyperlipidemia and arteriosclerosis, we should exclude cerebrovascular accident. The principles of treatment of vertigo, we should treat or eliminate the cause. Then we suppress the vestibular system by using of labyrinthine sedative. Labyrinthine sedative like cinerazine, stogerone for short duration, not more than seven days. And suppress the patient's emotional reaction by reassurance and explanation with the use of diazepam, which is a potent labyrinthine sedative plus an exolytic and wait for compensation compensation by the cerebellum and by regeneration of the neural activity within the vestibular nuclei and they eliminate the offending labyrinth like in patient with Meniere's disease we do labyrinthectomy and the last thing is surgery for vertigo when it is indicated like patient with cholesteatoma complicated by vertigo, we do lab, uh, we do ex exenteration of the cholesteatoma through tympanomastoidectomy and mastoid exploration. In patient with Meniere's disease, we do labyrinthectomy or endolphatic sac decompression. In cases with acoustic neuroma, we do oxygen of the acoustic neuroma and when there is a labyrinthine fistula, we do closure of the fistula. And this is the principle of management of any patient with dizziness and vertigo. The second subject of our lecture about the hearing loss or deafness. Hearing loss can be divided into organic and non-organic or psychogenic, and the organic Hearing loss divided into conductive when there is a lesion in the external ear, tympanic membrane, ossicles, middle ear, up to the base of the stapes, autosclerosis. These are cases of conductive hearing loss, impairment in the conduction of the sound waves within the external ear, tympanic membrane, and the middle ear. And the sensory neural hearing loss divided into sensory when there is a lesion in the cochlea like in Meniere's disease or a neural and neural hearing loss also divided into peripheral neural when there is a lesion in the vestibular cochlear nerve or central when there is a lesion in the central auditory pathways. Management of patient with hearing loss or deafness depends on complete history of the hearing loss, the onset, duration, progression, and the associated factors, and the complete ENT examination, examination of the external ear and the middle ear, and we do tuning fork test, Weber's and Rene's test, and then we uh, do pure tone audiometry for the patient to see the type and the severity of the hearing loss with a tympanometry when there is a lesion of the middle ear. We have sudden hearing loss and the sudden hearing loss is an ENT is considered as an ENT emergency. What we mean by the sudden hearing loss? Sudden sensory neural hearing loss is defined as 30 decibels or more over at least three adjacent frequencies occurring within a period of three days or less. Can either patient present with hearing loss, so in a pure tone, regain a hearing loss, أكثر من 30, 30 decibel أو أكثر. بترددات متجاورة مثلا الخمسمية ناخذ كيلو هيرتز والألف والألفين ذولا 3 adjacent frequencies الهيرنج لوس إذا 30 ديسبل أو أكثر وصار خلال 3 أيام أو أقل هذا نعتبره sudden sensory neural hearing loss 
mostly sensory neural hearing loss is unilateral, but could be bilateral. It may be accompanied by tinnitus or vertigo, and vertigo is a poor prognostic sign. And the treatment of sudden, sudden sensory neural hearing loss by a short course of prednisolone. Half the patients of idiopathic sudden sensory neural deafness recover spontaneously within 15 days. Differential diagnosis of hearing loss according to the history and the otoscopical finding and the type of the hearing loss. So we can reach to the diagnosis. A, if the hearing loss is unilateral, number one, sudden onset after upper respiratory tract infection with the presence of middle ear fusion and the pure tone audiometry reveals conductive hearing loss and the tympanogram is type B, so the diagnosis is otitis media with effusion. Number two, unilateral sudden onset after a trauma with disruption of the tympanic membrane annulus or presence of ragged, ragged perforation of the tympanic membrane. نقصد بالراغد يعني perforation ومشرشر الحواف وأكو هيماتوما or blood around the edge of the perforation and the hearing loss is conductive a type of tympanogram is type AD so it is an ossicular discontinuity number three unilateral sudden onset with normal tympanic membrane and the sensory neural deafness so it is a vascular lesion of the labyrinth or autoimmune disease of the inner ear number four unilateral a gradual onset with the criteria of the autosclerosis مثل ما ذكرناها بالمحاضرات السابقة. Number five, gradual onset, unilateral, gradual onset, with associated with tinnitus, with normal tympanic membrane, and the hearing loss is sensory neural, with high frequency affected, so it is a case of acoustic neuroma or vestibular schwannoma. If you remember from the lecture of otitis media with effusion, if all patients presented with unilateral otitis media with effusion, you should exclude nasopharyngeal carcinoma. If the hearing loss is bilateral, number one, sudden onset bilateral hearing loss and the normal tympanic membrane and the hearing loss is sensory neural type so this is a case of autoimmune disease affecting the inner ear number two bilateral hearing loss with a gradual onset and the patient is a child with the presence of a fusion within the middle ear and conductive deafness and the tympanogram type b so it is a case of what is media with a fusion number three bilateral hearing loss Gradual onset, and the patient is old age, normal tympanic membrane, and bilateral symmetrical sensory neural deafness. So this is the case of perspicuosis. Number four, bilateral hearing loss, gradual onset, with noise exposure, like in heavy industries, normal tympanic membrane, sensory neural deafness, with the presence of a notch at four kilohertz, so this is a case of noise-induced hearing loss. Thank you very much.